going to X0, we can go to just to O. Good. So the only E production we see is X goes to E. We look through all the other productions in the whole place. And here's, here's the first. So we add on O, right? Because X can go to E. Does anybody see why we do E productions before unit productions? Because you get unit productions when you do E productions. So that order is important. What's more, well, all right. What's less? Right. You start seeing this problem here. What's going on? The next thing you might like to do, x goes to e. Do you make this substitution? No, because it's just going to add y goes to empty. You you don't ever want to add e productions in these substitutions. So it looks like we're done, I guess. But it's not true. We're not done. We missed it. Z, y, Z. Because x can go to y, y can go to x, x goes to e. So y can also go to e. But we didn't even know that. So what the first thing you have to do is not just look for e productions, but look for what are called, it's got a fancy name, nullable non-terminals. In other words, non-terminals that sooner or later can disappear, not necessarily in one step. Everybody get that? Is there a limit to how many steps they... No, it might take 100 steps. You've got to keep checking. Uh, how do you check for nullable non-terminals? This is like a simple loop. Start with all the E productions. What are they? X goes to E. Now. Look for all productions that contain just x's or e's, or combinations of them. Well, not that one. That's got an o in it. Not that one. That one. So you just work your way backwards from the base case, looking for right sides that have just empty strings, finding all the non-terminals that can go to them, and then you get a new set. So first we started with empty string, then we get x and empty string. And now we look for all productions that can go to things that have combinations of x's and empty strings. That adds y. And then you do it again. What if there was a production that went to xy? Say s goes to xy, then we would add s to that list. What happens is you keep doing this and doing this, and suddenly in one stage, you get the same thing you had the last time. And then you stop. And you have to be able to stop because this can only get so big, it can't keep growing. You only have so many non-terminals. This is a completely decidable algorithm. It's easy to do, simple loop. It's very recursive. You could also write a tail recursive. There's a lot of easy ways to do it. But you have to find the nullable non-terminals. And when you do, you write them all down, x and y. And then you do the substitution simultaneously. You go through everything and you add them all in. So not only do we add O here, but we also add ZZ. And then we can erase all the E productions. Who had a question back here? Joe? There's no reason why every symbol couldn't go to something or the E string, right? In this case, they don't. In this case, they don't. But I'm saying there's no reason why Y, you know, or let's say Z couldn't go to you know, zero in the E string. And let's say that was your whole grammar. Is that true or not true? That z could go to 0 in the e string? Sure, it's possible. OK. So like if, every, if all your terminals go, one of the elements that it can go to is the e string, how do you go, what do you, what do, you do? You mean if everything's nullable? Right. You just run through, make all the substitutions, and then cross out all the epsilon productions when you're done. Just do it the same way. You don't do anything special. It would still work. You wouldn't get any weird thing. The only thing you'd have to do at the end is add this, because s could generate the empty string. And then you get all of the permutations of things that s can go to. Yes, you'd have tons of extra productions by doing it, but that's what you get. You have to do that to capture all the meaning of the grammar. Right, sure. Uh, yeah, Sharon. We don't have to do anything with that x goes to y, figuring out y is in. No, because we're actually going to get rid of it in the next step anyway, these unit productions. But we wouldn't get rid of it, because it has meaning. It, 
part of the meaning is that it captures the E production, but if you erased it, you would lose other things. Because what if Y went to other stuff? You really don't want to just get rid of that X goes to Y yet. You want to get rid of it and make sure you don't lose information, and we would lose information if we just crossed it out. But you dropped the E. But we dropped the E, right. This is now gone. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, questions? Yeah. Yeah, Seth? So once we make this substitution, yeah. you add it to the S line, do we cross out that X goes to Y or the E productions? We cross out the E productions, but not any of the others. Okay. Not any of the others. Just cross out the E productions. But it, it does seem like we're losing information by keeping that Y there, because if, if Y were with something else, we would, we would or a possibility that, that the Y just went away, like we do in Z, Y, Z. Then we have an or of Z, Z. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess there's no way to account for it with just one symbol, but it does seem like we lose the possibility that the Y just goes away that the x points to a y and the y goes away. Uh, but we haven't lost that possibility because the y can just go away and the x can go away because the y can go away. And any time the x and y can go away, we've handled all those situations. Okay. So we haven't lost any of them. Every place we saw an x, we got rid of it. And every place we saw a y, we got rid of it. And those can continue on from there. Okay. So we haven't lost them. It's a good, a good thing to think about, but it, we haven't really lost it. All right, so that's e-productions. Questions about that? Grammars have to terminate, right? You mean they have to be finite number of non-terminals? What do you mean they have to terminate? Like that wouldn't be complete because z doesn't go anywhere. And you'd never be able to terminate z. I see. Um, you're bringing up a point that I'm going to do at the very end, which is you can have grammars that have what are called useless symbols. We don't say they terminate or they don't terminate. We say their symbols are useless. We're much harsher. Uh, and it is important to get rid of all the useless symbols because they don't do anything. And the normal place you do it is, well, you can do it in lots of places. You can do it in between every step, and certainly you should do it at the end. But often you do it at the beginning because it cleans things up for speed, and then you do it at the very end. It is possible to generate useless symbols depending on what happens as you go along. So you want to do it once, and I'll show you how to do that. And that's completely reasonable. All right, questions? Now let's do the number two, and that'll finish the whole picture. Unit productions. Say you got A goes to B, and you got B goes to, I don't know, Bozo, <laughs> CC, ABC, and I don't know, that's it. Oh, I don't know, and, and zero, and zero. Well, here's what we do. If you have a unit production, you want to get rid of it. Well, let me add a few things here just for here. So say A goes to a bunch of things, including a single B. And we want to get rid of this. Bye-bye. How do we get rid of that without losing any of the information that that production normally let us have? Yeah. yeah. You convert B into all doubles and then put the doubles into the B. What do you mean convert B into doubles? To the all two characters along like they're supposed to be. You mean make this BB bozo? No. What do you mean? Like you said, make the bozo along Do the long productions on all the Bs. Bozo and ABC. Yeah. And then take that whole string and substitute it in for B. Okay. But why do we have to do the long ones? To why can't we just substitute them straight before doing the long ones? Do we have to do the long ones first? No, just thought it'd be easier to do it. But you can do it the other way. Well, because we do the long ones at the, at the end, but yeah, we. You copy them. This, this way you're copying them all and then have to Oh, I see, them. I see, I see. Um, yeah, so maybe we could. But, uh, but the second thing you said is, is, is the key, which is whether you do the long ones now or later, what you really have to do to keep this semantic interpretation intact is A goes to B, B goes to all these things, so A goes to all these things. 
It's as simple as that. So we're going to add on to this 